Bigger isn't always better. At least that's what I keep telling my wife. But in the case of photography, we do not want the biggest files because we have to store these bad boys. We have to put them somewhere, somewhere special. And that somewhere special is usually our server or an offline storage device. But there is a better way of storing and compressing. And today we're going to be talking about this. Yes, you know I am not a fan of the other part of this, but this one's free. This one doesn't cost any money. And I use this every single day for every single shoot I do, and you should too. It's pretty awesome. Super awesome. <laughs> So whether you have a small megapixel type camera like the R6 or the R6 Mark II like me, which is 20 megapixels or 24 megapixels, or the R5, which I believe that one is, my goodness, I don't even know. What is it, like 42, 42 megapixels? Somewhere up there. And you got the A7 V R5, I don't know, Sony, but I know they got huge ones up there too. And those files take up a lot of space. Those are huge photos. And so for the last several years, I have relied on Adobe DNG converter to take all my raw photos right from my SD card and converting them down to a raw small file. Now, the cool thing about Adobe DNG converter is you can specifically tell it how many megapixels you want it. So in my case, I'm working with a 24 megapixel and I move mine down to 10 megapixels. You can move yours to 12 to 18, whatever you want. You can even keep the megapixels and then put it in a lossy or a lossless DNG file, keeping a little bit more information. But I have found that compressing it down to 10 megapixels in a raw DNG still gives me enough information and leverage when I'm doing the editing that it's no different than the original raw photo. Now, as a real estate photographer, I am using bracketing when it comes to my process for photos and therefore I'm taking a lot more photos than most people are. And a typical day is about 800 to 1,000 photos that adds up in storage space. So I like to use DNG Converter when compressing that down. Adobe DNG Converter is an amazing piece of software that I've been using for several years now, probably going on about eight or nine years. I decided I need to compress these down and yet keep that kind of raw ability. So today I'm gonna to bring you onto my computer, show you the process I use when converting those photos right out of my SD card onto my computer, how I store them, what settings I use in Adobe DNG Converter, and giving you some options for your use in it in the future. Now, if you do a Google search, you'll find Adobe DNG Converter, but I will leave a link below so you can skip all of that. And they show you a screenshot of what that window is gonna look like once we open it. And here's some instructions on how to use it and compatibility preferences. There is a tutorial video talking about the advantage of DNG file format, which it's universal. It is a great format to use. And DNG stands for digital negative graphic. I believe it's digital negative graphic. I know it's digital negative. I'm not sure if it's graphic, but that would be my guess. I'm not reading through this to find out. So if I'm wrong, let me know. So this is the size of the window that comes up, DNG converter. And all you have to do is just hit select folder. I just put an SD card in, it is the EOS. So we'll click on that, click on that file. And it's the R6 Mark II. And I click on here and here are all the photos on here. This is a couple days worth of photos. And so I will hit select. And now it's gonna grab it from my SD card um, you can have it directly on your computer and then just have it access it that way. But the folder I'm going to use is SD card. That way I don't have to worry about transferring it over onto the computer and then converting it to DNG. I just convert it directly from that SD card. Now these are the preferences you can use. I convert it down to a 10 megapixel, but this is where you'd go to change that. So I'm actually going to stop this because I don't need to convert these. These have all been converted already. So I'm going to stop the conversion. 
the quality is not that different. Now, obviously you can tell a difference in the megapixels because the resolution is gonna change when you zoom in, but again, my photos are meant for online access and for web-based uh, searches. So the resolution of 10 megapixels nobody's going to notice the difference between that and a 24 megapixel image. And again, I'm going to save a lot of space that way. On the safe side, I do back this all up on my NAS. That's right. I have a NAS. We need to talk more about that in another video. Network attached storage. So what did you think about that whole process of using DNG Converter by Adobe? For me, it is a time saver and a space saver. If you want a quick link to download that free software off of Adobe's website, I'm going to leave the link below so you don't have to keep searching for it. It's out there, it's easy, it's free. I'm not sponsored by Adobe. I'm just a big advocate of this software. I also do like Lightroom, I like Photoshop, but you know what I don't like? Premiere Pro, because I am a DaVinci Resolve guy now, and yet I need to talk more about DaVinci Resolve. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and like, leave a comment below on your process, how you store your footage, and uh, maybe you can give me some pointers out there too. Whoa, don't freak out. It's not over yet. There's other videos you can watch. Don't worry about it. You know you're gonna be stuck in the rabbit hole of watching my videos. Everybody does. My mom says she watches them all day long.